The first alternative model of development we'll look at is Kerala State in India. Before we do, though, I'd like to draw your attention to several questions I'd like you to consider as we view the various alternative models of development we're looking at this week. As you move through each of the cases, think about the following questions. How is development defined in each case? While development has traditionally been defined in terms of expanding the economy and growing gross domestic product, many of the alternatives we consider this week offer a different way to think about development. Pay attention to how they approach the question. Second, what elements are important to the success of each of the alternative development models? Just as they offer different understandings of development, so too does each case highlight key elements and strategies that were important to their success. And importantly, a factor critical to one success may have been irrelevant to another. Finally, think about what strategies or lessons we might draw from each case. Is there anything in the case that provides insights into the development strategy for another? While we may not be able to simply take the success from one area and replicate it wholesale in another, there might be common themes or questions that are relevant across a broader array of countries. So be on the lookout for these themes. Kerala is a state along the southwestern coast of India, home to an estimated 33 million people. Compared to the rest of India, Kerala is more urbanized and more densely populated. It is also relatively poor. Yet, as Bill McKibben observed, Kerala is a bizarre anomaly among developing nations, a place that offers real hope for the future of the third world. Though not much larger than Maryland, Kerala has a population as big as California's and a per capita annual income of less than $300. But its infant mortality rate is very low, its literacy rate among the highest on the earth, and its birth rate below America's and falling faster. Kerala's residents live nearly as long as Americans or Europeans. Though mostly a land of paddy-covered plains, statistically, Kerala stands out as the Mount Everest of social development. There is truly no place like it. Let's consider the elements of the Kerala model in a bit more detail. As McKibben noted, Kerala boasts a high level of human development. It has near universal rates of literacy with a much smaller gap between men and women that exist elsewhere in India. This achievement in literacy was accomplished at relatively low cost. In 1991, the government introduced a total literacy campaign and declared, declared universal literacy its goal. Since then, it has managed to increase the official literacy rate from 90% to 94%. Kerala has also sought to ensure universal access to education. Since 2007, the government has reported a 100% attendance rate for children of primary school age. This is facilitated by the fact that 99% of the population lives within two kilometers of a primary school. Importantly, there is no significant difference in terms of attendance by gender, caste, or religion. And literacy is connected to other achievements. Kerala has one of the highest levels of news consumption of any state in India, and government officials know Kerala's, Kerala's neoliberate population often writes letters demanding improvements in healthcare facilities and infrastructure. Despite its widespread poverty, Kerala has also made considerable progress in public health. Its life expectancy of 73 years is closer to the United States than to the rest of India. And unlike the rest of India, where, rural, where the rural live shorter lives than urban residents, there is no rural-urban divide in Kerala. Infant mortality rates are relatively low, and most births take place in a healthcare facility. And Kerala's total fertility and birth rates are much lower than the rest of India. Much of Kerala's success in this area is the result of coordinated efforts to ensure access to basic healthcare services and promoting basic healthcare techniques like immunizations. Kerala's achievements reflect broad a broad commitment to human development, even in the context of ongoing poverty. If Kerala were a country, its per capita GDP would be about $1,000, placing it 168th in the world, behind the Central African Republic, but ahead of Zambia. But in terms of human development, Kerala performs much better. The Human Development Index is a composite measure of, so of total social development incorporating a broad array of factors like mean years of schooling and life expectancy at birth, in addition to GDP. 
Looking at the Human Development Index, Kerala jumps nearly 100 places from 168th to 74th overall. All of this has led observers to describe the achievement as encompassing a Kerala model. The Kerala model has several elements. Improvements in material quality of life distributed equally across society while still having low per capita incomes. Further, such benefits are distributed equally across all society with no substantial divides based on gender, class, caste, or rural residency. Government-sponsored provision of basic services like health and education, largely funded through redistribution programs and taxes. And high levels of political participation and activism among ordinary people in a largely democratic political system. Kerala's model thus challenges traditional understandings of development, which posited that countries must achieve a particular level of development before they can afford redistribution programs or social development. This idea is known as Wagner's Law and suggests that social development was not a viable path towards economic development. Countries needed to focus on economic growth first and then would have the resources necessary to pursue social development at a later date. In many countries, though, this never came. But Kerala took the opposite path. It pursued redistribution and social development first. But why was Kerala able to make such advances? We can posit several reasons. Kerala's geography made the distribution of social services easier. Its relatively small size and high population density meant that the traditional problems of delivering resources to small, diffuse settlements could be avoided. The provision of social services, in other words, was made more efficient. But this geographic explanation can only, only help explain how the process was made easier. It does not explain why Kerala would choose such a path in the first place. The social position of women in Kerala was different than in the rest of India. The relative degree of gender equity is reflected today in the fact that Kerala has largely avoided the problem of India's missing women. It has a sex ratio of 1,083 women per 1,000 men, the highest in India. Kerala has a long history of gender equality. In the pre-colonial period, Kerala was a matrilinear society, with property passing from mother to daughter rather than from father to son. Women had property rights, and dowry was rare. Consequently, women were viewed as social equals. The history of gender equality led to higher levels of political participation among women, which translated into increased demand for social programs, especially health care and food. Additionally, a more educated female population helped to lower total fertility rates. Kerala also has a long tradition of political activism. This high rate of political activism runs across all levels of society, including the lo lower caste people often excluded from political life in other Indian states. Kerala's political spectrum reflects the progressive demands of Kerala's population. In most of the rest of India, there are two parties that dominate, the BJP on the right and the Congress party on the left, with many smaller parties also represented. In Kerala, though, the political spectrum runs from the Congress party on the right to the Communist party on the left. Indeed, in 1957, Kerala became the first place in the world to democratically elect a communist government. Since then, the Communist Party and Congress Party have regularly traded control over India's government. The progressive end of the Indian political spectrum, in other words, is the conservative end of Kerala's political spectrum. As a result, even when the more conservative governments have been in power in Kerala, popular activism has forced the government to press for social development. Despite its successes, Kerala's experience has some limits. Kerala's development path was initially pre predicated on the idea of imp that improving social development would fuel economic development. But throughout most of India's history, Kerala's growth, growth rate has fallen well behind that of the rest of India, and Kerala remained one of India's poorest states. Kerala remained dependent on pepper and rubber production and fishing for the majority of its economy. This led critics to, of the Kerala model to dub it sustainable poverty. Part of the sustainable poverty was the problem of underemployment. Because education was so highly valued, people found themselves trained for jobs that did not exist, generating frustration among the population. This also led to a high level of outmigration, 
as Carolyn's in search of employment as Carolyn's left Kerala in search of employment outside India. This led to high level of remittances back to Kerala as Carolyn's living abroad sent money back to their families. Indeed, an estimated 20% of the economy of Kerala depended upon these remittances sent from Carolyn's living abroad, particularly in the Persian Gulf. But in recent years, the situation appears to be changing, and economic growth in Kerala is picking up. Kerala has become a popular destination for foreign companies wishing to establish call centers in India. In recent years, Kerala's economic growth rate has exceeded 7.5% a year. Whether or not this level of growth can be sustained, though, remains a question. But regardless of whether or not Kerala's model translates into economic development, its model of social development suggests that broad improvements in human well-being can be achieved even amid continuing poverty.